welcome back to Free From Lifestyle and welcome back to another ninja recipe. So the inspiration behind today's recipe is basically just using things up. So you can put a twist on this, you can use different vegetables if you prefer, but I'm gonna make a really simple soup using the pressure cook option on the Ninja. Um, we had a leek that has been hanging around and I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do with it. So I thought, soup sounds good to me. I made some gorgeous bread in the Ninja earlier as well, and that is absolutely beautiful. So soup is gonna be perfect with that. So let's get started. I've done a little bit of prep already, and I'll show you, and this is gonna be really nice and quick and easy. Right, so let's get the pot in there. I've just washed that up quickly, because I used it earlier for the bread. Now we wanna have it on sear and saute, probably around number four. So let's get that going. What I've already prepared is some potatoes and I've um, crushed a little bit of garlic into those as well. I've got a uh, leek, as I was saying to you, wanted to use this leek up. And then I had a little bit of celery hanging around, so I've got a tiny bit of celery as well. But this is pretty versatile and it's a good recipe for using up things. Again, we're keeping it simple by using dried thyme. If you don't like thyme, you prefer something else, then, then use that. I've just got some salt and pepper here. And then I've just made up a jug of vegetable stock as well. So first things first, let's get a knob of butter in the Ninja. You could double up the quantities if you want to make more. You could always freeze a portion of this as well. Or keep it in the fridge, of course, for a few days. Just put it in an airtight container. While it's melting, we'll just pop in the leeks and they will start cooking. With soups in the Ninja, when you're pressure cooking, you could just completely skip this stage, but I think it really does add extra flavor to your soup if you just saute it off like this. I'm just gonna grab the celery and I'm gonna put that in at this stage as well. We want to soften and when these just start to color, we'll pop the potatoes in. We don't really want much color on this at all. Right, I'm getting a tiny little bit of color on there now. So let's scrape in the potatoes out of that bowl. And the garlic is already in there. I haven't really got a quantity of garlic to tell you. I think it's really just up to you how much garlic you like. Now I'm gonna to toss these around and get these potatoes smothered in that gorgeous butter that's in there. All right, really important to get your seasoning in. So I'm going in with some black pepper, some sea salt, and then my herb of choice, which is some thyme. This is such an easy recipe, isn't it? I mean, literally, this is taking minutes to do this. Now, all that's left to do is to add that vegetable stock. We've got two pints here. You've probably heard me say this before, but just to mention, when you are pressure cooking, you do need quite a lot of liquid. And when I say liquid, we're talking water or stock. If you don't have enough, it will not come to pressure. It needs to be a thin liquid so that the, um, the steam evaporates and obviously it can't go anywhere because it's, it's sealed and that's what's gonna cause it to come to pressure and cook the ingredients. I've stopped the sear and saute setting, so let's close the lid, select the pressure option, and then I'm going to cook that for seven minutes. So we want it on high, and I want a delayed release on this. So pressure cook for seven minutes. There you go. And the delayed release, probably I'm guessing, is going to take about five minutes. So this isn't going to take very long at all. Let's press start. Oh, hang on. Let's make sure that we are sealed. We are sealed on the vent at the top. And then press start. It only took a few minutes to come up to pressure. So it's now counted down from the seven minutes and that's nearly finished. And then we're gonna have the delayed release on the pressure, as you can see coming up here. I just wanted to explain to you quickly why I have chosen to do the delayed release. Um, I think it's really confusing when you first get a ninja to understand you know, what is the reasoning behind that. So I'm making a soup, obviously it's liquid, obviously it's wet. We want it to have that consistency still. So basically when you're pressure cooking, the steam is building up inside and it can't be released. And that's making the cooking process a lot quicker. With the delayed release, it's gonna take a lot longer for the pressure to reduce. That means that the steam that's in there will actually revert back to liquid. And that way we still keep a nice liquidy soup without having to use too much liquid in the first place. 
Another thing is when you're wondering um, whether you put it on high or low, um, high pressure is normally pretty fine for most vegetables that are gonna go into um, a soup, so into the pressure cooker. If you're using vegetables that are a little bit more delicate for your soup, then I would probably go with a lower option just so that you're reducing the temperature inside the pot. As you can see here, that is now finished and it's showing that the pressure is releasing. And I don't know if you can see that really, but there is a little bit coming out of the valve there now. That was really nice and quick. It shows that we can open it. So let's slide across and have a look inside. Oh, smells really, really delicious. So now what I'm gonna do is blend this up and you can use a big blender or say like a hand blender. I'm gonna go with a hand blender and just literally leave it in here, why not? Um, saves up on some washing up, doesn't it? Um, and then we can add a little bit of cream just to richen this up a little bit. So now we have a lovely thick rich soup. Of course, if it isn't thick enough, then I would always recommend in a separate cup, just grabbing a little bit of the soup liquid, add a little bit of corn flour, mix that up, never put the corn flour straight in or regular plain flour. My choice is normally corn flour. Um, so mix it up in a little pot and then pour that in once it's smooth and that will thicken it. If it's too thick, then obviously you can just add a little bit of water to it. Now this is optional, but we've got a little bit of cream here. So not too much. Oh, I suppose you can put in as much as you like, really. But that's just really gonna add a lovely richness to this soup. So here's my delicious soup served up in a bowl. This is my ninja bread that I've made as well. So to top this, this is the indulgent bit. This is why it's called a loaded leek and potato soup. I'm gonna pop on some really rich, lovely cheddar, and then some crispy bacon, and then to top it right off, a sprinkle of chives. How good does that look? If you're enjoying my ninja foodie recipes, then I'd love it if you hit the like button below because it helps my channel to grow so much. And then also subscribe to my channel because I've got so many videos coming your way and I really hope to see you next time. Don't forget, feel free to leave me a comment as well because I'll always reply to you. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.